This episode of the Echo Ratings Eventing Podcast is supported by our friends at Fairfax and Favour. And we wanted to tell you a little bit more about their extraordinary story. It was a story that began back in 2012 when two friends made a rather ambitious pact to combine their middle names and launch their very own footwear brand. They were actually funded by shifts at the local pub and they then took a once in a lifetime trip to Spain to find a factory that would produce luxury goods that would help kickstart the dream. From storing their precious new wares in a loft, launching on the show circuit and pursuing that dream, the Fairfax and Favour vision has since exploded and there's a range now that includes bags, clothing, boots and sandals. The luxury shoe giants have an array of awards, including last year a Lloyds Bank Business Excellence Award and they're passionate about raising money for charity and have already donated over half a million pounds to really worthy causes. Their story continues, but for more information, go and visit their website, fairfaxandfavour.com. Oh God, it's so exciting. Happy Hail Bob Day. It is a happy Hail Bob Day. That was Arilo coming in for the competition. A venting manager is back. Best show that we have, Alphabet is spaghetti. People are saying quality horses. I mean, you're a bit of an eventing geek just like us. Welcome to the Echo Ratings Eventing Podcast. And listeners, we are looking forward to the Dodson and Horrell Chatsworth International Horse Trials, which are taking place at this weekend. Big four-star short and a big advanced class, actually, on British soil. Um, I'm joined by a lady who could well be nursing a badminton hangover like myself. Catherine Austin, how are you? I'm fine. Gosh, what a weekend. I think we're all completely exhausted, but exhilarated as well. But I'm so looking forward to Chatsworth. I'm really sad that I'm not going to be there because it is one, I know we say this a lot, but it's one of my favourite events. I adore Chatsworth. I love the people who run it. They're a really lovely, nice team. It is beautiful. And it's always an exciting competition. And and it's it's curiously British. It has... Oh, the wonderful terrain for galloping and jumping horses. Obviously, a staggeringly beautiful house. Loads of people go. It's a very popular event. And I should imagine that the people of Derbyshire will be flocking in. Yeah, and for me, it would be, I guess, classed as quite a local event. I mean, I'm, I live just over an hour away, so I'll travel home each night, which is probably as far as I'd want to be going, but it feels local. Um, and it's one of those places, every time I've, I go back for the horse trials, it gives me goosebumps. And I know what I'm expecting. Um, you know, I know, and, and you could go to lots of events on British soil and say there's a magnificent house, but there is something about Chatsworth that's just magical. Um, and if you ever get the opportunity to go, listeners, you should go because it's absolutely incredible. And if you can't go this weekend, well, you're in luck because you will be able to watch all of the cross-country action, horse and country, over the weekend on h and Plus on Saturday and Sunday with yours truly chattering away to keep you company along with some very special guest banking and, and lots of riders joining us as well. So you'll be able to catch it and see it for yourself. But Ian Stark is the course designer, Catherine. He always sets, I mean, Chatsworth is a proper cross-country test and the terrain is really influential. It's very sort of uphill and down dale. The time is really tight, but it's a proper Ian Stark track, isn't it? Yes, it is. An Ian Stark track squeezed into, you know, a four-star short course. As you say, the terrain is very variable. You start on the hill, you come down to a flat bit with a very imposing water complex, very dramatic and um, exciting water complex, and then wind up onto the banks and run along them and more water and up and down and around and trees. And yeah, for an event that is fantastic viewing because you can see loads of it, it has a lot of challenges and it's certainly, I'd say, one of the toughest four-star short tracks we have. And the ground can be, because of where it is and the type of soil, it can be variable. I should imagine the ground will be very, very good. And it, it's a place that dry weather means it will be good ground rather than hard ground. Yes. Yeah. Um, and actually, we've not had a huge amount of rain in this part of the world at all over the last few months. Not many places have, to be honest. Um, but I think it will be be good going. It's, as we've said, a proper, proper time test. There's been some real variance in the years in which people have made the time. When the Event Rider Masters legs started running at Chatsworth, all of a sudden it became pretty achievable on the basis that, and by achievable, I mean in comparison to the fact that I think one person had made it in like 
nearly a thousand horses that had attempted it or something mental and that was Astier Nicola I believe uh, but you've had some of the best horses the likes of Isid Parent Aladun who are notoriously fast um, Chris Burton has been there Piggy Marches Quarry Crest Echo has made the time but you know because of the terrain because of the the type of track it is it always is a real test of, of cross country and the time plays its part on the leaderboard it's not going to be a dressage competition at all Just a fun fact for you listeners, if you're looking forward to the dressage, then the record was actually a 21.1 going back to 2008 at Chatsworth, which was set by William Foxpit and Chilly Morning in 2017. There you go. Fun fact for you. Let's talk about a few of the combinations this year, Catherine, because there's some really nice horses in the field. It feels like we might be seeing one of the sort of the up and coming superstars actually really making their mark at the top of a of a four star leaderboard um you know there's some there's some good horses that have very good four star form uh, and, and beyond in fact we'll talk about Izzy Taylor monkeying around um Oliver Townend comes forward with a couple of really good rides but then there's some really nice younger horses that I think are going to give us a really nice opportunity for us to see a future star make their mark this weekend so Um, I'll start by talking about that one I've just mentioned who heads up the Prediction Centre, Izzy Taylor, monkeying around, who, I mean, he's a brilliant horse. He's been top 10 at the European Championships last year. He has all of the ability in the world. He's a winner at this level previously. He's been placed numerous times that he had got past his name slightly over the last couple of seasons because he has become a lot more reliable. But he has sort of reverted to form a little bit earlier on this year. Um, He had a really naughty 20 penalties early on at Burnham Market at a fairly innocuous pair of angled brushes. And so monkeying around has been a bit of a monkey so far this year, and they would have to turn that around here. I think she ought to rename him. Maybe I mean, the name I called him at Burnham Market was not a consumption, <laughs> Catherine. Um, and I imagine Izzy's name then wasn't either. No, so, and I think I just start again, rename him something like, I don't know, straight and perfect. I don't know. We can have, maybe we should have a competition. <laughs> she can rename him so he can live up to a new name. But of course, it's frustrating, isn't it? Because he's hugely talented and one imagines that he will leave the dressage here. Let's hope yes. that they continue from there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, You know, he's very, very talented in the first phase. I mean, he could actually challenge the the dressage record of William Fox Pitt, Chilly Morning, who are 21.1. He scored a 22.9 last time out at Burnham Market International. He's an 11-year-old now. Let's be honest, look forward to watching him, particularly in the cross country. There's no better jockey on board. So Izzy will just hope that he is... um, Back on side, shall we say. Let's talk about a few of the the others. Oliver Townend has two and very near the top of the prediction centre. I should say Izzy Taylor monkeying around Leeds with a 22% win chance. Then there's two Oliver Townend rides, Tregilda and Dreamliner, actually, who was a Burnham Market winner. And he's got Lucas in there as well, Catherine, who is a really exciting horse for him. Yes, it's been interesting. Three, three very capable horses. Uh, Tregilda has won at this level before. Um, he's a very big horse. Whether Chatsworth's cross country is his dream ticket, I'm not entirely sure. But, you know, the jockey's pretty amazing, isn't he? So, And Dreamliner, obviously, on a roll. Lovely win at Burnham Market for this homebred horse of the Chamberlains. One would imagine he will go very well. Lucas is a horse that Oliver and Victoria Wright and John Peace bought from Camilla Spears last year. We haven't yet seen them completely shine, but I think Oliver's got a lot of faith that this will happen. Couldn't tell you whether it'll happen this weekend or not. My bet, my yeah, one of his three here would be Dreamliner. Okay, interesting. See, I would just say Tregilda has been to Chatsworth once before, was in the top five. Uh, An interesting one. Um, Oliver has obviously been to Chatsworth numerous times before. Dreamliner was very, very impressive, to be fair, at uh, Burnham Market. Yeah, he was. Um, And I'm not not knocking Tregilda. I just think he's such a big horse that... Uh, piloting him round here, there might be <laughs> there might be easier places to let him run and jump and gallop than here. 
I mean, who would bet against Oliver Townend, though? He he comes here off the back of two top five finishes at badminton. That will have done his world number one status the world of good, especially considering he lost to his Kentucky points uh, the week before. And he obviously had Ken- uh, badminton points to defend as well. Um, and Pippa Funnel not quite firing at badminton certainly helps his cause for, for staying at the top of the FBI world rankings, which we know is important to him. He's in very good form. And you would think that he would have a very good chance here. Um, I'm interested, actually, by a couple of Roz Cantor rides. Roz, who, again, very good form, second at badminton, um, with Lordship Scraffalo. Pencos Crown Jewel, who's been, you know, top six at Bixton Five Star. She's a really cool little mare. She's actually on the market. Um, that's publicly yeah. available. She's for yeah. sale. And owned by the Macon family. And, and she's actually come back to Roz. My guess is that... Um, she's ready for a run and we haven't, you know, she hasn't been sold as yet. So it's exciting to see her come out a little bit of an unknown quantity. I wouldn't quite be, you know, betting my house on what her plans would be. My eye, I'll be honest, is more caught by Ros's other ride. Yes. In is a lot DHI, who was very, very close to being at the top of the table for the Blenheim nine-year-old class last year, actually had um, a, a sort of a fairly inexperienced mistake cross country, but he's unbelievably talented. Um, has won a lot on his way up to this level. Yeah. Yeah. Won a huge amount and actually has, has really impressed at the three-star level and obviously stepped up to four-star for the first time at, at Blenheim. And he was very, very good. You know, he, did a 26.6 dressage, jumped very, very good clear show, jumping around over a very tough track um, in thick fog at Blenheim last year, um, just for a few time penalties. And it was a shame he had 20 penalties. He'll have learned a lot from it. I'm excited to see him make a, another step up here. Yes, and I wouldn't want you know, a young horse to be allowed to make mistakes and learn from them, don't they? And that's sort of exactly. one of the points of, of that class. I, I shouldn't be in the slightest bit worried about this. I mean, Roar's Road, like, you know, as did Oliver and did all of those brilliant Brits in the top 10 at Badminton last weekend. She rode quite superbly. She's a joy to watch. Yes, this this horse would god i, I don't want to say it's going to win but it's um it, it's super and it'll be up there we haven't got there yet i'm going to i'm going to I'll put you on the spot in just a second uh catherine but first of all who else stands out for you of those ones to watch well bubby upton's got two here and she <laughs> i mean she's a very competitive girl she will have been heartbroken by one mistake at the last fence at badminton and she will be gunning for it she has mm-hmm. um, Cannavaro, who she obviously knows extremely well and clever louis who came to her from chris burton uh, the blenheim eight and nine year old winner a few years ago highly talented and she seems to have got a really good partnership going with him but clearly she'll know him a lot less well than Cannavaro. But she'll certainly have her foot down and her chin jutting out and be wanting to make amends for her little badminton error. I mean, heartbreaking, but still a lot to look forward to in the future. And she's she's got the Cannavaro and Clever Louis are both in the top six on the prediction centre, but you don't have to look a million miles further down for Magic Roundabout and also Jefferson 18, who she rides, I'm pretty certain, she had him at Burnham Market in the advance. And I have a feeling it's her first four-star with the horse. So I'll double check that for you listeners. But, you know, she's got a real indication, bearing in mind she's just been to, it is her first four-star with Jefferson, um, bearing in mind she's just been to Babington with Cola and she comes here the following week with four in the four-star short. I guess that's a real show of strength in terms of the depth of her string and the quality of her string that we're talking about those horses being so competitive here as well. I'm fairly, fairly delighted with a horse that we're going to be able to see at Chatsworth. And it's one that I I cannot wait to see. He made his five star debut, the rider last week at Babington in friend of the show, Tom Carlyle. And he actually comes forward with a horse that really impressed all the way up the levels Uh, Domaniac de Belliard, who was a horse that was very much, you know, in conversation around those Le Leon days. And he was top 20 in the Le Leon d'Angers seven-year-old world championships in 2020. Had 20 penalties there, but otherwise finished on his dressage score. He's a fast horse. 
you cannot doubt Tom's ability. And Tom has had chats with form as well. So he's been on the podium there in Event Rider Masters. Like that was one of the places that Upsilon really impressed and shined. I cannot wait to see this horse. Only done one four star short. That was in Linier last year, and he was clear inside the time. Admittedly, a lot of people made the time that day, so I'm not going to take too much by it, but it's an exciting one to watch for France. Yes, and I love the fact that the French, or well, some of the younger French uh, target Chatsworth, is so different to their events, and they believe that they need to show their horses the, the different terrain and the different kind of question and track that's chatsworth presents and they've traditionally gone very well here it's great to see him here and i'm sure the horse regardless of how it performs i'm sure that it will come on a lot from it yeah it's an interesting sort of you know venue for that it's very much one that gives horses a a really really good education in terms of being able to to tackle different tracks and to be able to take on the different terrain and the different experiences and also the the dressage arenas at Chatsworth are really atmospheric you sort of go through a tunnel into the dressage from the collecting ring into a, a dressage arena that's fairly closely flanked on all sides by trade stands you normally get a good crowd at Chatsworth and it's always interesting to see how horses respond to that because it can be a little bit hot in the dressage at Chatsworth and I'm looking forward to seeing a few of these younger horses and how they stand up to it who else from your side Catherine are you looking forward to Two people that I think are interesting, Carl Daniels um, with his fabulous Regan Rua. He, I re- clearly remember Carl bringing two horses to Chatsworth a few years ago and winning both four-star short sections with them, one of whom was this extraordinary little mare. We haven't seen a lot of her for a while. She went to Tokyo and things didn't work out there. If she's in form and in one piece, she will breeze around this. Yeah. She doesn't always nail the dressage. She's a funny, hot little thing. But wow, cross country, you know, I, it, when, it should be. It's just so far within her comfort zone. Yeah, absolutely. I always remember seeing him the year that he won, I think, on her, which must have been 2017, possibly. Um, yeah. And he was waiting to go into the show jumping and one of his grooms or something was trying to take some boots off or put some boots on on the back of, you know, her hind end. And I just looked and thought, God, I'm glad that's not me because she's <laughs> so sort of fiery and there were legs flying everywhere. And it, she, but she's just a little pocket rocket. She's yeah. like a pony. And she's, she's hot stuff. With, yeah, hot stuff. That's the way to describe her. I mean, she literally was his ride at, you know, Junior European Championships in 2014. And then they've been to the Olympics. They've been to World Champ. They went to the World Equestrian Games and trial, all sorts. Um, she's just super, super cool. But a person to note is at the other, horse-wise, the other end of the experience um, level to Regan Ruhr, which is Danny Evans, a Hollywood dancer who won mm-hmm. at, um, Thorsby recently. Danny's a in really good rider. Star, yeah. and- it's hard to get horses, you know, she has to up the levels. You have to turn them over and keep selling and keep finding them. And um, I'm I'm excited to see her at this level on, an, on a promising horse. Yeah, agree. And actually, I've got a couple of Toms who I want you to, to look out for, listeners. Um, Tom Jackson asked for Manchiate, who would be a horse that is very, very fast. He's been to this level three times previously. He's made the time on two of those occasions, including um, the eight and nine-year-old class at Blenheim last year. Tom Jackson will have taken a lot of confidence from his run at Badminton. Super um, ride. Yeah. Ask for Mancia. Yeah, Ask for Mancia is a really, really smart horse to look out for. Um, definitely keep an eye out for them. And then the other one is one that I absolutely love and we've seen on... Um, a few occasions previously, and actually, listeners, was one that we would have seen on h and Plus at Barbary last year when they went very, very well to finish. I think it was fourth in the, the four-star short then behind Andrew Nicholson and Swallow Springs. Um, and they really put their foot down cross-country. And it's Tom Rowland Quintilius who has been to a short level six times, not made the time, but could certainly put in a very, very quick performance. Has is, is not one afraid of putting his foot down. You know, there's been a few sort of 
single figure time penalties. He had 1.23 seconds over at Blenheim last year. Um, he went very well at Buccalo, was five seconds over the time there to finish just outside the top 10. Really smart horse. And Tom's a really decent jockey as well. Will Rawlin and the partner, they went very, very well at the early part of this spring, would certainly be ones to look out for. And Gemma Tattersall, Johansson, well, who yes. makes his four-star debut, which is exciting. I know, Gemma's got two horses um, and in the top bit of this. She's got Flash Cooley and Johansson. And Gemma will have really minded not being at Babington last week. And she yeah. will definitely want to remind us that she was the Victon five-star winner last autumn. But these two horses have gone really well this spring. I think she'll be very competitive. Okay, Catherine, who wins Chatsworth? Ooh. Okay, I think that Bobby Upson and Cannavaro are going to win. I think that Oliver Townend and Dreamliner are going to finish second. <laughs> oh, and I think that Yasmin Ingham and Ray DJ, who we have totally failed to mention, are going to finish third. I mean, you could shake the hat and a lot of combinations could come out there. But let's go with that for, for now. Okay, I would just, I mean, Gemma Tassel, you mentioned she is a former winner actually here. She won um, 2017. Just looking at past winners of Chatsworth. So Quarry Crest Echo, Piggy March, Senior Medicot, Bettina Hoyt, Samuel I. Dutow won it. Um, yeah, Julia Kolevsky back in and the last year, well. the Masters won. Mm. Um, he after Benavia, Astier Nicola, his Olympic ride, he won the first ever ERM, which was one of the strongest four-star short fields we have seen in history. It was just incredible. Um, Tom McEwen, Andrew Nicholson's won it a few times. London 52, Laura Collett, also another to have won it. Um, have we heard of them? Who are they? I mean, you know, they've done all right in the last yeah. few weeks. They might, they might be, you know, flagging flagging up on your radars. Um, <laughs> Sam Griffith's Happy Times, uh, Oliver Town and Ulysses. I think there's been some brilliant horses, but there's also been a few horses that have popped out that actually are the real sort of true gritty cross-country machines. Um, Shabrak, Lucy McCarthy, was Lucy Vigasmar, won it back in 2011. Um, Emily Baldwin, Drive Time, Ben Along Time, Clayton Fredericks, basically some very, very, very good horses. I'm going to say that... I think I agree with you that Bubby Upton wins it with Cannavaro. Um, in fact, no, I'm going to say, I'm, I'm going to go against the form. Monkeying around is going to not be a monkey. He is going to be a good boy and he will win it for Izzy Taylor. Then it'll be Bubby Upton and Cannavaro. And then I'm going to say that we would see Tom Carlyle, Darmagnac de Belliard on the podium. They're my three. Um, if I'm going to give you a dark horse to finish inside the top 10, then my dark horse would be Tom Jackson, Ask for Manchie to, to look out for. Um, I just have to mention while we're here, the very co- the high quality advanced there, which where we see one of my favourite combinations, Emily Chandler and Gortfader Diamond, excellent pairing out again for the season. I mean, there are lots of them, but I wanted to mention them because they're always really classy and will yeah, they're just they're good people to watch. If you want to watch someone ride well cross country, watch Emily on this horse. I think that's an important note, actually. And I'll be interested to see, you know, a few of these advanced combinations. I th- certainly think we'll see it with monkeying around Izzy Taylor. You know, they could well be Lemoulin bound. And this is very much one of their last sort of chances to have a, a good competitive run before they go to Lemoulin. And Heidi Coy, who's had a couple of weeks on the sidelines, actually has hers in the advanced as well. She broke her collarbone in a fall at Burnham Market this spring. So good to see her back. And Angus Smales and his Bicton five-star horse, ESI Phoenix. Yeah, absolutely. There's a few of them, actually. And there's a few that actually didn't go to badminton that perhaps had a little bump in their plans and maybe they've rerouted um Zara to be to, you see a lot yep. of yeah Zara Tindall class affair um you see a lot of uh, either Bramham bound horses or Lemoulin bound horses in the four star and the advance and I think you could look at both of those classes for a very very good indication of ones to watch um, I would just put a, a shout out for Polly Stockton and Chico in yes. their advanced former intermediate. intermediate national champion yep. last year, and they could definitely go well. Um, and if you're watching the live stream, uh, look out for Georgie Froze Maximilian, who is just 
the coolest horse, um, trundling around and advanced. He wouldn't be built for the Chatsworth Hills. I don't think Georgie would mind me saying that, but he's just the most honest, cool campaigner that you would find. So look out for them. Um, we're in the thick of it now, yes, aren't we? Awesome. You know, it's just, oh, yeah. it's, it just feels like they keep on coming. And we've got Protoni this weekend as well. Yes. The preview show for Protoni listeners is out now. Can it be a happy hail Bob day? Watch this space. Will it be a happy hail Bob day, I should say? Um, Ingrid Klimka topping the prediction centre there, but some very, very good horses, including um, Tim Price's Poe five-star winner Falco is back. So good to see them. Can't wait. We're into the thick of it, as Catherine says, and lots to look forward to. It has been a pleasure as always. And listeners, thank you guys for tuning in. We hope that you are uh, sort of enjoying the absolute deluge of podcasts that are coming your way. Thank you for sticking with us. Tell your friends. Please, please tell your friends. I cannot actually tell you how grateful we are. We have been overwhelmed by the amount of downloads and comments and messages that we have had, particularly over the last couple of weeks with Kentucky and with Babington. And it really does make all the difference. Um, So if I set you a little piece of homework, tell one friend about the eventing podcast, just tell one friend that might not listen. And I had my drives to and fro to badminton I got time to catch up on some podcasts which um, was fun and I really enjoyed your interview with Edie Campbell of she's here with Fireball F so that's another another combination that we have to look out for I really enjoyed that it was interesting listening to how someone who has a life totally outside of our sport makes it work and be competitive is always interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I love the different backstories. I find different mm. backstories of, from lots of different people. We're lucky. Our sport is so diverse. It's so rich in, in lots of different ways. And so it's nice to hear all those different angles as well. Um, of course, what we'll see this weekend is the early contenders appear in the brand new Event Horse Owners Association Members League because some big prize money on offer. Um, that has just been announced. £20,000 the prize pot stands at the moment. And it rewards consistency and good performances, exceptional performances at the four-star short and four-star long level throughout the 2022 season on British soil. And the first of those events is Chatsworth this weekend. So we'll be looking to see how that progresses. There's a podcast out this last week. You can go and catch up on all of the latest news um, and find out a bit more about that league. But I think we'll see some early front runners. And I'm looking forward to that bit as well. Um, So look, Catherine, thank you. Listeners, thank you. Lots in store for you. Stick with us. We'll be back soon with more. Thank you for listening to the Upper Ratings Eventing Podcast. Have a wonderful day, everybody. And I look forward to having you back with us soon. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram for more. Listeners, we'll speak to you again soon.